Hello everybody, it's Mix Ray Ray, and welcome to Art Talk. Today, for this lovely Halloween, which I hope you all are having a happy Halloween, I am going to be doing a swatch and review of Valor Rowney's Aquafine Gouache. Now, I have been researching which certain gouaches, gouaches, paints to put in like a pan to dry and use sort of like a watercolor pan. And when I was researching these, for one, there was barely any like video reviews of these. It's always either the designer's gouache or like the artist's gouache. Um, never the Aquafine gouache, which is sort of Dollar Rowney's. I'm, I'm willing to believe they're middle ground from what I can see on their website. Um, the colors that I have chosen for this particular palette are the, their starter set, which as you saw had titanium white, um, cadmium hues of red and yellow, their ultramarine dark, their yellow ochre, and a umber? I'm pretty sure it's a burnt umber, um, but you know, it's an umber nonetheless. And so I thought I would give you guys a video on the actual specific Aquafine gouache because Dollar Rowney has many fine gouaches, um, but this one specifically I feel is lacking, uh, well I, I don't know about if this review is going to be comprehensive, but you're going to be able to see how it works and everything and how well it paints and all of that, especially with the swatches, I'm just showing you guys pretty much how they uh, go on paper. One side is going to be watered, um, the opacity is going to be watered down and then the other side is going to have white applied to them. Burnt umber, there we go. I see on the bottom of my little swatch sheet, it's burnt umber, not raw umber. I should have known it has a, burnt umber always has a more reddish, um, darker tone than raw umber. <clears throat> Whatever umber actually is. So the reason why I got these paints in the first place, even though I, it's been a long time since, I've done, since I have done any kind of review, excuse the mumbling and talking over myself, my meds are like wearing off right now and I'm playing with a fidget toy to make sure I stay on topic. Um, that aside, what was I saying? Okay, the, the reason why I got this set in particular, because it has been a long time since I've done any kind of watercolor or gouache or just paint in general review, is because I wanted, like I was saying before, a gouache paint that I could dry in a pan, um, these little half pans that I have, um, for a very specific palette and purpose. Now specifically with this leaf green, I don't feel like it's actually that, um, what's the word, light in tone. Um, what I should have done before swatching these is really um, like sp uh, squeeze the bottle, but like their little tubes or like mix the paint inside of the tubes because specifically with this cerulean hue, um, the yellow ochre and the titanium white, a lot of filler came out into my pans first and that is why some of the consistencies in here are just really weird. So the, this, okay, right, I said the starter set, the other three colors that I added to my palette would be the permanent rose, the leaf green, and the cerulean hue. As you can see, excuse me, I'm trying to think and like watch at the same time. Ooh, that is just the darkest burnt umber I've ever seen and it's so pretty oh goodness so yeah okay what was I saying before yes yeah, so there was um, not not filler binder there we go the binder for some of these gouache paints especially as you can see with the little undulating in the titanium white was not mixed very well uh, well not very well I assume that just happens with time I know a lot of the times whenever I'm just looking when I'm just window shopping online for specific paints and I see reviews saying that all of this gross clear wick liquid came out of the tube before the paint and I was like yeah that's that's the binder that's fine that happens with a lot of paints like you just mix it and it's fine um, so I never really take that into account when someone talks about it in a review unless they're saying like, no, like I get it, this happens, but this is too much. Like, you know, like with specific 
um, lower quality paints or maybe paints that haven't been milled whatever the term is um, too much into it but for these specifically I think after I mix the paints up in their what do you call them the pans and everything uh, they're still shiny they're not they don't dry like normal gouache like gouache is supposed to be matte when it's dried and everything and there are some pans in here that are dry you will see in a little bit but specifically the cerulean hue blue the light blue um, that one I think I accidentally just put way too much binder in there and not enough of the pigment that I was trying to mix in uh, and it I ha I'm going to have to refill the pans um, quite a bit uh, when all of this is done and I'm refilling my pans I have to take that into account so because you see all of like the little air bubbles in my yellow ochre and in just a couple of seconds you'll see how they turned out after I dried them over the weekend so there we go so you can see um, the lighter blue it is just super shiny um, I did have to refill it and I'm going to refill it again uh, because right now it's taking a long time for it to fully I wanted it to fully dry before I filled it again um, but I'm getting a little impatient but um, all the other colors as you can see dried beautifully uh, they work great and this is the gouache slash watercolor palette I will be putting them in um, I have a mix of certain brands of watercolor in there the three on the bottom are just Jackson Arts Studio Paints. The top were the Roman Schmaltz introductory set for the, the Aquarius introductory set. I had some, what, do you, what is the Artist Loft from Michaels, their chromium and like metallic paints in one little set. And the Grunbacher Academy, um, a, a blue and a purple above the metallics. Those all have specific purposes because I'm going to be using this palette for specific reasons. This particular piece of paper is some leftover label paper I have for, you know, shipping labels for my Etsy shop, which you should go totally check out. My, I have a sale going on at, until um, October 14th, so please get everything while it's still there. Um, but this is an extra shipping label that I couldn't really use for anything else because I, it had peeled off and on again too many times. What I did is, for those of you who don't know, I also make my own watercolor paper. And so the sizing that I use for my watercolor paper, I brushed on, on top of this sticker label. And I don't recommend doing that um, because as you saw, it was very curly, so it warps a lot. Um, it held up to very thin layers of this gouache that you're seeing me paint onto it fine, but um, don't put watercolor sizing on sticker label paper because that's not what it's meant for. It helps. It helps tremendously. Don't get me wrong. If you want to do watercolor on sticker labels, that's a very valid method and you know, it just, I guess it would just take practice. This is probably going to be a, well, I still have half of the sticker label left so maybe or wait did I draw on I think I drew on that already so maybe it, it it worked I don't do I wouldn't do it often it took a while for I like I had to go to lunch and forget about it <laughs> before I realized it was fully dry um, so yes as you can see the colors on here are doing very well I'm trying my best to try and see what kind of colors would be mixed well in here. Um, so what I'm, this particular painting, I'm, my brain is going off, trying to go off topic. For this particular painting, I did mix brands just a tiny little bit. Most of, most if not all of the color that you see on here is the Arteza Aquafine gouache. The little darker purple loops under the eyes and like the mistiness that is Arteza's metallic gouache um, that is that was the other bottom side of the art palette that you guys saw beforehand of the like the shiny ones that was like the full color set that was Arteza's metallic gouache which I will um, 
just be using very sparingly. I have a specific purpose for those colors, but the, the colors still needed to be there. And so I actually found that using this particular gouache was really perfect for me because um, obviously I come from a watercolor background when it comes to painting. And so the actual fineness of the pigments within this gouache I think work really really well for anyone who wants to get into gouache um, but started as watercolor because you hear all the time from so many other people who um, paint that gouache really is like obviously it's its own medium but when you think about it and people describe it as just opaque watercolor you come you come into it with this preconceived notion that you can work with it exactly like watercolor and that's really difficult that it makes it more difficult that way because um you you thin it out to like no end and then you're wondering why it doesn't look like all of the other gouache paintings that you see online or in person and everything and really it's it's a balance it is if watercolor was trying to be crayon that's a very bad analogy an analogy skit nix the art analogy so um um, let me talk about these paints specifically more and then maybe I'll go more into uh, what gouache as a medium is like. But these paints are just, like I said, very the they milled them so smooth. Like, I don't think really, I know there are some umbers and like ochres and everything that like have a granulation to them. These really didn't. And considering the paintings that I'm planning on doing with this specific palette in the future, that really works out well for me. So if you are a watercolor artist and you want to get into gouache, but you kind of don't want to start with like an introductory set, please look into the Dowler Rowney Aquafine gouache. It really, um, it, it really works. Okay. I don't know what else to say about this. It's just, it's very smooth. Um, I specifically was working in very thin layers specifically because of the sticker label paper that I was working with um, But I don't, you, I don't really don't think you have to like I Sprayed the pans after they dried. well obviously after they dried with water waited a few minutes and I could have stuck these um, Trap the these Kolinsky travel brushes that I got as a birthday present a while um, just like last month I was going to mention that before, but I caught, I was too busy in my rambling. Um, I, if I just like was a little too heavy handed with how much paint I um, was trying to pick up with the brush, I could have picked up the whole pan. Granted, that is probably because I did not wait a full three weeks for my pans to entirely bone dry desert set in the pan. And gr yeah, that's valid. Um, but really, these re-wet, especially the permanent rose, that one was really, it's rock hard now. So that one is just perfect when you want, if you want um, gouache in a dry pan. Uh, but yeah, even that one was just like, I'm putting now. So this gouache set, specifically the Dollar Rowney Aquafine gouache that I keep mentioning, obviously, it works really well. I really, really liked that I took the chance to just say, nope, this is part of my palette. I'm not going to wait. I'll test it after I get it and everything um, and put everything together. I'm really, really happy with my impulsive choice that I made. And obviously, I am kind of in love with this water, well, okay, not watercolor, gouache sticker that I made that I'm putting it on my palette. So for the big reveal, because I've been trying to keep it a little bit of a secret, um, not talk about it, this palette will be a part of my Welcome to Altruni storytelling series that will be um, on this channel for like the rest of time until I finish whatever this universe is going to do with its life and my life. So thank you for listening to my very rambly review. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was enough information for you to make a decision on what you want to do. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful October. I'm going to get out of your hair now. And